Hello folks and welcome back to the Dream League Season 11 Group Stage Games. That's right, we are here ready to continue the action in Group D with Chaos Esports Club versus Na'Vi. We're back on the mic, it's me Killer Pigeon and my boy Lacoste. We got, you got us all day, basically. You got this and then Lacoste with one more series after this. Vici needs an opponent here. And I mean, is there a clear favorite here? I feel like this might be a very close series. Yeah, both teams uh, showed pretty much the same skill level on day one, I would say. And um, it's going to be an interesting uh, matchup for sure. Not too much info on Na'Vi. The way they play, you can just uh, take the day one as an example. Also, they didn't play too much. They qualified for this major. They played in uh, V-Play. What was it? Valentine's Madness. And played one game in one of the online tournaments and that's uh, pretty much it so not too much info to collect you don't know what they're gonna pick and ban but uh chaos they know what they want to go for instantly picked razor and oracle as an opener this hero just feels too good not to have him yeah this i mean is this going to be a pattern is the real question is the oracle just going to be the deciding factor because we've seen it be dominant so far today and teams are definitely having this almost at first ban phase, but seemingly they're just allowing it to go through. Is that, do you think that's just a mistake? Do you think this is uh, more ban worthy than, for example, the Shrek or the Nature's Prophet? I'd say yes, right? I would say definitely uh, a lifestealer. I, <laughs> I didn't see too much lifestealers uh, being picked since the nerves uh, to him and hand of midas so i don't think the the hero is that great anymore this hero oracle on the other hand he's just uh <laughs> too good he provides so much but you need to have some gap closers you need someone that can get on top of him either kill him or make him forced to use ulti on himself true uh, has been a recurring theme that we've seen the oracles and your recurring statement has usually been where's the centaur pick type of hero that can actually easily reach that back line yeah. and find that kill i like centaur as a counter the oracle because you can just easily run away from a fight that you basically don't want or you can find them in the back lines wouldn't be bad against not just the oracle but also the razor right so you can disengage from the static links with the stampede Definitely some justification. Oh. Yeah. Although, is this going to be... I, I mean, I'm going to assume that Magnus is going to be Blizzy's hero. It was last time we saw it. I don't think Na'Vi are the biggest fans of running it in the post 4 position. Or even post 5. I think I've seen one or two teams try and run it as. We will see the Brewmaster come out, though. So that might actually mean that this is a Magnus support this time around. Yeah, I feel like Brewmaster right now is... Um only position three because he needs items he scales uh, and the position five heroes strength heroes got nerfed a lot and uh feels like ice frog doesn't want uh, the game to go into this direction no too much flex you know it's nice to have this kind of environment where heroes can do different things but you don't want this jack of all trades that is insanely good in all those positions right yeah I mean, we saved that for our new hero releases so that we can actually pump out more Arcana sales. Still waiting <laughs> on Mars, by the way. I was kind of surprised they released him without actually giving him Arcana. It's coming. Prepare 25 euros. What's he going to look like? Is it just going to be a full-on This Is Sparta type look? I would love that, man. That would sell so many, let's be totally honest. It's probably the perfect theme for him as well. Finally, the Viper does get banned out. People seem reluctant to pick it in the first phase, and we rarely see it survive the second ban phase. Yeah, they need to pick some kind of a control for this Brewmaster, Silence, uh, and Troll as well. Right now, they pretty much have none, which means Brewmaster Split is always going to get off. Right, there's, there's something to deal with it. Primal Raw can be pretty handy here. Of course, there's no risk of your opponents now picking stuff like an Oracle because, well, you've already got that. What would be good against this right now? Because how does the Troll versus Beast lane match up, really? 
Oh, Beastmaster is not having a great time. So I suppose they want to lane troll with their position 5 hero so they can secure his lane and give him more kill potential because just by having Magnus, it's Lion. not that great. They might run Mag as 5 and have Lion on 4. So it really depends what they prioritize. It's feeling like it goes that way. because I, I guess you're looking at it, right? You're going Magnus versus Lion. Which one does more of the gold? What do they want to be doing? Lime with Blink is insane. Magnus with Blink is great, like, every two minutes. There's a big difference there. And that would also free up Magnus to just babysit and follow around the troll, buffing him up with the empowers. Yeah. How boring do you think it must be for someone to play Magnus 5 in that scenario? Walking around, just buffing someone all the time. This is, this is what I talk about. Uh... I mentioned it uh, yesterday and today. Enigma as a counter to Mag. You group up around RP, and suddenly there's a really good opportunity for Enigma to cast Black Hole. It could be Enigma position four, from uh, what I see, because Beastmaster really is not playable as uh, four nor five anymore. So they're looking into either safe lane or or a mid hero. They can put Razor. Against the troll, let's say on the mid, but uh, it's not easy to to execute because if Razor wants to drain his damage, uh, just use the ranged axes on him, slow him down. The static link breaks, and the uh, troll is good. So, do you prefer in this scenario? Would you prefer to see Razor around in the outer lanes or the mid? He's gonna play on the uh, side lane uh, for sure, I think, because. There's going to be a Brewmaster and probably Brewmaster paired up with uh, Mid Mag. So two melee heroes, and that's where Razor loves to play. That's true. Also, longer lane gives you more time to run people down, right? Yes, exactly. So do we maybe see Chaos just try and give something that could go mid or safe lane to throw Na'Vi off on the 10th pick? Yeah. Well, longer is better. That's what my girl... <laughs> I mean, uh, I guess that says a good thing for you if you're staying with you this whole time, buddy. <laughs> But oh, final ban. Uh, so we are. Que <laughs> so your question was. So do they like flex? Do they go, you know, pick something that can be good in mid or safe lane, and then throw Navi off with their tenth pick, right? And go, okay, we need something that isn't counted by either of these two. Well, and Navi will probably pick a mid hero, but they also have a last pick, so it doesn't really matter. They, they're going to see what the chaos is picking already, so they can put troll on wherever they want, and uh, Chaos Esports, I think they need um, a playmaking mid. Okay. Ember, Sp Ember Spirit's still in the pool. Is it risky with the Lion on the field? Because you've got that Insta-Hex, Insta-Stun, there's a decent amount of lockdown, right? It is, but there's not too much uh, burst damage besides uh, Lion's Finger. True. And uh, Lina... Lina Band could imply that they're going to go for it. You never know. Maybe Na'Vi are taking Chaos Strats a step further and saying the problem wasn't that you ran Lion as a 3, that you didn't run him as a 2. No Lion mid Strats, maybe? Okay. Well, that's... I mean, that throws a spanner in the works for Na'Vi because they have gone for this farm farm focus, right, with the Troll and the Magnus. But if you get stuck trying to just cruise out to the late game, you're now against an Enigma and a Spectre. Hmm. This lineup from Chaos is going to need a lot of time to actually come online because it's extremely passive. Oracle does not rotate, neither does Beastmaster until he gets level 6. Enigma is probably just going to jungle, which means that uh, their laning stage is not going to be the greatest. So do Na'Vi bid low? Do they go for something that peaks in mid-game here? So where's that pick come from? What's that going to be? Lena was banned out. That would have probably been optimal here. All right, they Good are pick. going in. Queen of Pain yeah. coming out. Good pick. They literally have zero ways to control Queen of Pain. Besides Beastmaster Roar, Oracle has Q, but uh, it's... Uh... A really good Queen of Pain game to start with. And a lot of burst damage. I like Navi's lineup. Very aggressive. They have uh, some tower damage. Way to control this Oracle with the Hex. Another 
uh, mobile hero that can get into backlines, find Oracle, blow him up, especially when Brewmaster gets his blink dagger, which means that the, they, if Brewmaster blinks in and uh, they force a roar on Brewmaster, there's going to be some counter initiation coming out from Mag. And uh, I, I feel like this is a free Brewmaster game. And most of the time, uh, it's in their favor once they can use split freely. Yeah, they definitely have a more ease. The execution, I want to say, once you get like your ultimates online, because you've got the Enigma, the Black Hole that you don't want to throw out or willy nilly. You want to have that as an insurance policy. Feels like there's a lot of pressure on Tavo to be making plays in the mid game, right? Because he's the one that's a little bit more loose with the primary run this blood Yeah, I guess they would just want to survive until Spectre gets the haunt, um, so they can start playing aggressive. Enigma gets level six. Uh, should be around 10 minute mark and that's where they he probably gets helm of the dominator gets the siege creep and they push the tower with the threat of a black hole plus specter haunt this is the timing that they want to take some tier one towers beastmaster aura i mean beastmaster and enigma together are extremely strong because aura uh with the eidolons a lot of attack speed on them so tower pressure but uh, from what i see navi has a lot of ways uh, to to deal with it I didn't see, I didn't see a lineup like uh, this uh, for quite some time. I, I want to see who's playing uh, that Magnus. So it's gonna be Soneiko playing the Lion, and uh, Mag is gonna be that position four, which means that uh, he's gonna get the good timing on a Blink Dagger. I want to see Queen of Pain. This is the hero that uh, I think is underpicked right now, and because uh, she received. Some small buffs, extra extra intelligence at the start, damage still unchanged, but uh, she can work uh, a different way right now because I see people not even getting Shadow Strike level one. Hello, Lion. Yeah, you walked into the wrong neighborhood and he'll end up being the first blood. That was pretty bold coming out for him. You want to see this pop do well, but that's going to be a healthy beginning for the Razor on this mid lane. There, that's not a really place to be. We found that out the hard way. I mean, you're walking I mean, up high it ground is blind. If you're three or four, if it's two heroes, you really have no business there. It works in your pub games doesn't mean it works. Uh, major, uh, they learned that the hard way. Does mean there's already a salve sitting on Wii, so he's got the additional regen. It's harder to pop those salves though because of the shadow strike. It's an important thing to kind of look at here. Yeah, I've seen Queen of Pain's skilling. Um... Scream of Pain, level 1. Sometimes even getting a 0, 1, 2 build. So you can clear the creep wave. And uh, the mana cost changed from 95 to 80, which is a huge buff on uh, level 1 Scream of Pain. That's true. I, I can see that maybe working out if you think the raise is going to do something similar, right? Where you just try and put points in the unstable current and both of them just focus on farming. So Neko's trying this again. This time he wants his ward down, but... Well, Misery, he does at least see it. He can't stop the sentry being placed. <laughs> Magical with the blink level one, breaking the static link. Static link cooldown level one, four seconds, blink cooldown, 15. He only drained uh, five damage, no biggie. Oh, and it looks like the deal is done. Line did get his sentries down. Misery's bringing out some to deal with that instantly. He wants to have access to this jungle area and be able to farm. Although I don't think he's, he's going to get the second D warden time. No, he's stuck inside it. The bot lane looking right now. They have to pressure the Spectre hard, right? They can't just uh, let us be kind of a neutral lane where both sides farm. Yeah, I mean, there you are pressuring it. It's a tri lane. Uh, this Magnus is not doing too much in a tri lane, but uh, it's good for chaos because you have. Uh, Beastmaster in one versus one scenario, so he's gonna get a lot of level and they should trade farm, but Lizzy playing it uh, extremely well, way more creeps, and he keeps harassing him using a thunderclap and cinder brew. Problematic, it's not like he's gonna get too much support because, of course, Misery wants to be farming in the jungle as much as possible to try and just make up that loss of gold. Now be suffering from run this try lane, and actually, they're gonna get some now as they look on a HFN, gonna get him low. Going access through, one final tap, and actually, greedily, Seneko takes the kill. 
That was off the back of them trying to kill Chu. They're going pretty low, but these early boots from the Magnus have paid off. Yeah, he can run to base faster. Uh, region rune spawned bottom. No one knows about it. There's no war. No one went to look for it either. In fact, there's no, yeah, there's no ward coverage at all for the runes. Which I guess is... I know, I would have expected especially Magical to grab one because he can make plays off the back of some good runes. It's harder for Wii, right? Because you've always got that blink to instantly escape. Yeah, he's not going to get more points in Static Link, I think, because it doesn't really matter at this point. That's true. And the just casual harassment that comes out from Unstable Current is pretty hefty over time. You already see how that Shadow Strike really frustrates him. He's got that salve, but he can't even use it. He might play aggressive. There he oh, goes. Yeah, he's going to go for it. Wii's in trouble, actually. He'll just have to tango up to stay alive. That hurts a lot, the Shadow Strike. Get him low. Won't be able to kill him, though. He's the big winner so far. Blizzy is just... As you said, he was a certain dominance early on. Does this continue is the real question as Beastmaster gets levels in the board and levels in the aura? Just if Blizzy kills the creeps like this. Yeah, he's doing a good job just to... Trying to kill Boris whenever he can. Whenever he can. He has enough money to buy bottle. And the creep wave is in a good spot, so he's going to run to the secret shop and get it. Also oh, scout we? what Visery is doing. He's dead. He tries to salve up. He's going to go for the TP where it's going to be closed, nope. but too late. No cigar. Oh, no, no, the tick oh. wasn't in time. He bought Fairy Fire, if I'm not mistaken. It, it was looked so like it, quick. Yeah. yeah, I think he did to actually survive. I mean, that would have got him as well, because that was a level two shadow strike. Now skewer back in the back lane, in the bot lane, rather. King's going to go down. They are just shutting down this, shutting out the Spectre, in fact. 11 last hits. The poorest of all the cores right now. She's not having a good time, as expected, because they are playing against tri lane, dual lane against tri lane. They're playing against Troll, who's a pretty strong laner. Whenever you get close, you get harassed. A couple of uh, hits plus whirling axes. Oh, this Oracle, man. He's, he's dead. Yeah, they keep finding him. Nice backstab from Chu. They drag him into the welcoming arms of the line and the troll. He just TP'd back to a lane, which means he needs to run back. So Spectre is going to be alone on the bottom for the next 30 seconds. Problems arrive for the side of Chaos. This is not the optimal way for the lane to go. You can see Wheeze being punished a little bit in the mid lane. Definitely having to bring out more regen than Magical is at the moment. And then, of course... We don't really need to go over how Spectre's doing again. That's pretty clear to see. So the real hope right now for Chaos is the top lane. Blizzy. And Blizzy is pretty deep. He doesn't have level 6. He doesn't have mana for the TP. In fact, he'll just be dead. He swings more. They have to wait out the Drunken Brawler. Space, I guess. You did drag the Razor pretty far away from the lane. But now you're giving a lead to the Beastmaster. He went to Rune Spot pretty early and he was extremely greedy he could have picked up uh, the one on his side Chu and Sonoiko picked two on side of Navi the piece then in the end the little counts especially with the Spectre it's any gold that you can get I don't think this is going to be one of those Radiance type games right you maybe have to be more aggressive with your build or do you just say okay I'm not going to be able to compete I have to go for the Radiance depends how the game develops if they can pressure the tier one tower open up the map tavo is level six right now enigma also lurking in the jungle he's gonna have that helm of the dominator uh finished in a hundred gold so they're gonna pressure and pressure the tower kill from rook comes out and blizzy's all but dead malifus will get him very low they need one more touch and they should be able to find it the birds give vision and there it is the clicks come out magical now looking for some vengeance won't be able to find it. the misery just quick enough and just healthy enough to escape and no mana on this Queen of Pain. Yeah, she's just bringing the bottle and boots for herself. That's the beauty of getting the first kill before him, which means Beastmaster. I mean, CS-wise, it's pretty much the same, but Beastmaster uh, got the experience from killing level 5 Panda, which gave him level 6, and then they can play more aggressive on this top lane. Also, Spectres doesn't have that much farm even though it's 30 cs so not not too bad they didn't shut her down completely also she has a lot of levels so 
Sure. Closer to level six, next Beastmaster Roar should be a should be a kill. Maybe if they rotate Enigma, they can take that uh, tier one tower on top. That was the big thing about the movement coming out from Magical is it wasn't as much to get any vengeance with that TP, and it was to make sure they didn't lose the tier one at the seven minute mark. And that that kind of regard, his his goal was achieved. Lizzy does now have six, so they can actually bring up the line. They're going to try and make a play with that split when they see the opportunity. Misery is playing pretty deep. Doesn't have boots either, so he's a very slow ball. Slow boy rub. No, oh, he's using the board correctly. Planning him down. There's the Alpha Wolf. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> no, he's just gone. The Alpha Wolf indeed, because they assert a dominance here, and Blizzy just has to run for the high hill. And the Nigma's level 6 right now, doesn't have enough mana to cast the Black Hole, neither does Beastmaster, do they have a Shrine? Nope, not ready yet, he's gonna pop some Mangoes, plus a Clarity, so Black Hole is up and running, Spectre, pretty close to level 6, they could work um, with that, trying to get a another kill. It, it feels like Navi is not utilizing their heroes correctly. You think it's to do with... The Queen of Pain, should she be used more aggressively? I mean, you've got that six on Brewmaster. Is this where she rotates and looks for those team fights? Yeah, either Brewmaster rotates or Queen of Pain. Queen of Pain has bottle. She has haste in a bottle, which means that she's going to rotate to probably Brewmaster's lane. And there they go. And we'll try and get Kona Tavo, who does now have his Vlaz. So he's been farming pretty content up to this point. Same with we actually. been stacking the jungle and taking full advantage of that maxed out unstable current to get himself... Nice amount They're going to find Misery first. Oh, they are indeed. He does have the black hole. Split's going to come out. They want to chase on Otavo. Malphys and Echo. All the damage too big. The horns going to come out. Now moving in. Sonic Wave Root going to get them low. Misery almost dead. Should tick out anyway. Regardless, they'll ensure it. They get the deny though. Nicely done. HFN moving across. He's tanking up against all this right now. Cyclone in the air. Beastmaster can't assist. HFN just trying to move away. He has got the wand, so they can't commit too heavily. And Blizzy now in a lot of trouble. This Alpha Wolf meaning everything hurts so much. They're going to pursue under the tower. The pings come out. Who wants the kill? You give it across to your spec who's been punished so far. No, actually, Tavo gets it with the boss. There's my kill. Yeah, and Tavo still managed to save his uh, Primal Roar with Vlad's and uh, Alpha Bull first. That Alpha Bull. All right, he's running away. I just want to see the damage. Like, boars deal 100 damage with Vlad's and, uh, and that plus attack speed from uh, Inner Beast. Definitely the combo that is working out for them right now. It's going to be a Trader Towers in the meantime as Crystallize pushed on the bot. The Spectre that had a very worrying start, looking pretty healthy now, is also going towards that Midas, just trying to boost up your XP and gold gains as much as possible. Yeah, I mean, you can see what the Chaos is trying to do. Once Spectre hits level 6, yeah, you, you rotate with, with the heroes now, even V got a solo kill and he has road of atos good pickup against the uh, queen of pain against troll to keep him in place also works miracles with uh, your static link definitely looking to assert dominance and that also makes we a very tanky boy i mean raises strength gain pretty decent at 2.6 it's gonna be more or less impossible to kill him unless you find him solo what is the entrance kill it just feels like every you know, we're kind of on a repeat, but I feel like I'm gonna have I'm gonna go ahead and say it's the Oracle, right? Like every time we see an Oracle game, your entrance skill has to be Oracle. If he's level six, he's level five right now, so they ne don't need to care too much about him. And with this uh, Helm of the Dominator plus a Siege Creep, another tier one tower secured, which opens up the jungle for them. And the Spectre can farm a lot right now. She has Hand of Midas queued up. I think that's a that's a, a good choice. It's going to get a lot of levels. They don't necessarily need to build Radiance right now. She's having a not a, not the greatest start of them, but uh, she recovered. That's what matters. Of course, more levels into the horn. The cooldown does go down, so they can be active more often. And actually, Navi are the ones looking to get active. They see this push, and they're annoyed by it. So it's going to come out, stun the cross on the Misery, and they're actually being cut out by Weed. The fight's been split up. Magical in trouble. Throws out the Sonic Wave, but he's rude on the spot. The Atos is going to go down. Being it comes out, but Razor so tanky. He just absorbs all that damage and doesn't give a damn. Cycloned up. Oracle Beam in control, but Troll Wallet as well. Now the Backdraft's coming out. There's the RP. Misery. He hasn't got the mana for the Black Hole. He's 10 mana short right now. Boss Promise going to keep Tavo alive. Allow him to move away. Misery. He'll just kite it out and kill off Crystallize. He'll turn around. Look for more. Seneco will go down to Weed on the other side of the fight. 
But they're not done here just yet. They want Blizzy as well. They'll find the kill on him after getting the tower. And Na'Vi, they gain nothing out of this. Yeah, it feels like Na'Vi can't fight right now. 5,000 network lead for them. Again, Oracle with the save. He got enough money. Just bought an urn. So it's not looking good for Na'Vi. If Chaos wants to go, they could go into Roche Pit. There's literally zero ultis on side of Na'Vi. And they're going to be online in a minute and a half. Magnus had a good timing on a Blink Dagger from position 4. But uh, not, not very effective. That's the thing about picking up a Blink Dagger in this type of scenario. Yes, you are supports so as less priority in farming, but it's... I mean, it's the same reason that people don't like to pick up a Blink Strayer on a Tide, right? You want to try and find something yeah, that gives you more that, that's support. that's a core Tide, so there's, uh, there's a huge difference between it. Like, but, like, the difference wanna... is that he's used the RP and now he doesn't have much to do, right? Yeah, but you, you can still land a game-winning uh, RP from position 4, okay. uh, which kind of... Position 3 Magnus builds into these tanky items, team fighting, uh, whatever, Greaves, uh, Crimson Guard, Pipe, uh, and then gets uh, a Blink Dagger. But uh, he also needs to follow his core a lot, so that core can get the items, and it it's very different. I, I feel like Position 4 Magnus is, I is guess... the best. I best uh, role for the hero. I guess the point I was going to try and make is, would a 4 staff be better? Because then... When you don't have RP, you can make the saves, right? Because you're up against an Atos now as well. Or do you but think that like Blink was definitely just thumbs up 100% better? Blink is better. He okay. could get 4 staff next item after mana boot, but um, he would be halfway to probably 4 staff if they won that team fight. It's always better to have a Blink because positioning will be better. You don't necessarily need to land an RP if they're sieging tier 2s, tier, tier, especially tier 3s, you can just skewer someone back and the, that's a guaranteed kill and then wait for Blink Dagger off cooldown and then reinitiate. Alright, that's very well. Uh, one coming out. They found a target in the top lane, tried to TP away, but Magical's been found and killed off. Root on the spot. Just Road of Aethas doing work. There's not really much you can do about it. And now the question is, what does Chaos want to do? Because they've taken this tier 2 top already. They're playing around this area a lot. It does suggest they want to go towards the Roche now. Yeah, look at the difference between position 3 on side of Navi and from Chaos. You have Beastmaster, Vlad's already finished, Medallion plus Claymore. And your Brewmaster is going to have a Blink Dagger, a naked Blink Dagger. And what can you really do with that? Because we've just seen... The awkward issue for the Sanavi right now is do you have enough damage? Right? We saw the last fight. They fingered we they didn't quite hit him with the Sonic Wave, but even then he was sitting fairly healthy. And it just feels like you need a way to get these back lines. So I don't I, I don't think the blinks are wrong choice from Blizzy, right? He has to get that. Or would no, you that's like not, to see that's really just... not the problem. It's the early game rotations. Uh... That they didn't read the map well what Chaos uh, is supposed to do with this kind of a lineup. Which ended up them not grabbing any kills and that's what uh, Queen of Pain wants to do. Someone diving a tower, she TPs, especially if she has a rune. And she even had the haste rune, but they didn't achieve too much with it. What do they do in this scenario? Like, what's the focus? Do they just need to play around the Queen of, Main, uh, Queen of Pain rather, and actually look for pickoffs right now? Just make space for the troll to farm? Troll is going to farm. They, they don't necessarily need to fight them right now, but it's uh, going to be a problem if they just uh, keep keep dodging. Like right now, it's a free Roche for Chaos. And they can't do anything about it because uh, Black Hole is up. Have you seen this combo from, uh, from EG yesterday where they have Oracle and Enigma. Enigma just runs in. Tries to like land a black hole, tanks a spell. Oracle is there to back him up, and you land a two or three, three man black hole. Is this same. itemization from V, that, that's just crazy good. Road of Atos against Queen of Pain. She was ahead. Queen of Pain is not having a good time. Zero two zero. It's actually a support Queen of Pain, judging by the net worth. He's definitely looking pretty rough right now, and what you build into really going for that Yules, not. What you want to have to build as a Queen of Pain, you usually want to get some sort of aggressive item, like those Orchids, for example, that can get you more kills more easily. 
Problem is, even once you get that Yules, like, are you going to get to an item after that? Because just look at Chaos's movements. They are looking to just assert dominance and make this map very small for Na'Vi by the 20 minute mark. And they're going to lose all tier 2 towers. And you're on a clock. Because you're playing against Spectre, who has Hand of Midas, you're losing all the towers. Yes, your troll is farming, but they have a lot of kiting potential. That's another kill for Wii. Oh, and yet, there's a horn coming out. They're chasing for more. They see Magical, but they can't lock him on the spot. Let him get away. They will hang around the bot lane, though. They just want to actually try and apply pressure and remove any control that Na'Vi had over their own jungle. HFN is not happy. With Misery taking all the last hit on those small dragons. <laughs> Whoops. The hey, he needs his Guardian Greaves, okay? For the benefit of the team. Just sitting there telling the Spectre, you got your Midas, what more do you need? Back up to 3k gold now, Spectre. Oh, he needs to get out the RP, connects on the two though. And now the Valtron Sonic Wave throwing everything at them to ensure they die. Two ends nah, up on the high ground, but gets a double kill as a result. Huge mistake from Chaos. Like, mistakes like this lead to actually throwing the game in the later stages. I, I can see HFN being tilted because a lot of his farm has been taken by either Razor or Beastmaster. So he can just go to jungle and actually farm, join a team fight whenever there's, there's a haunt. There's really not a place to be trying to siege tier 2, actually farm near tier 2 tower from Navi. My question was, well, like they were playing around the lane, trying to cut it, but they'd let the creeps go so far out in the bot lane as well, right? So it was, it wasn't like they were going to get a push going anytime soon. So that should be the reset in their mind, right? That should be the moment where they go, okay, we are ahead. We're not that far ahead though. Maybe we just need to calm down. Players five want to take these objectives or go back to farming a little bit less aggressive. More importantly, play around their ults. I think maybe they should. Do you think they should be making these big plays without horn off cooldown? Or well, these aggressive plays? They right? can play. They can play as for Spectre. Farm. This is where he should have been from the start. Plant a good vision for him so he can farm. Go into enemy jungle as for and just control it. You have a Beastmaster. Beastmaster's Hog. He's the one who's controlling the map. Like in a couple of interviews, um, I remember some things saying that, like, who's uh, calling the shots during the mid-game? And I, I think it was Fade Beyond who said, the one who who's playing the Beastmaster, he's controlling the game. Well, it's for Faith. I mean, it's fair. This is definitely that type of aggressive hero that can get those pushes going, but can also switch over to kills. Now, Wii's the one charging for though. He sees Magical roots him up as well. He should be able to find this kill. Stun him up. Black Hole commit to ensure the Queen of Pain will fall. Tavo Pursuan looking for more. Does have the Shadow Blade, but they are backing off and up to the high ground where he can't see them anymore. And the Shadow Blade didn't pay off yet. We didn't see a good usage of Shadow Blade so far. Got plenty of time left. Just coming off cooldown again, but they're actually going to try and force the side of Na'Vi to come to them because we're up on the high ground and the Eidolon army are doing work. Up oh, two. Skill back. We. Backs off though. They don't want to commit onto him. Still so tanky. Clap will slow him down a bit, but this building's going to fall regardless. There's double catapults and a very tanky razor on your high ground. They have 20 seconds on Aegis. They do not want to fight until HFN gets that radiance. 600 gold away should be done in the next minute. The news for Na'Vi is you do at least have your BKB online for your troll. Maybe you can fight back against that. They don't save their shrine though. Born the catapult finished it off. Good old Boris. Making sure Chaos's good work is complete. It's like choose should go towards the Shadow Blade next. So not interested in the four staff tool. Just more initiation tools, basically. Still a long way until he he gets it. Sonic is doing a good job devoting uh, Pretty much everything that Chaos throws at them. Still feels like Na'Vi struggling to find any sort of opening. It's, it's always the, the paranoia that's associated with that haunt, right? 
And you must know that there's going to be a Radiance now on line for HFN. Or at least you'll find out in a moment. They're about to fight. So it's going to come out. We still pretty tanky. False promise protect him. Now the Horn in. Snake again. Free low. Already just disappears. And now Magical is going to be rooted across on the side. With the Fortune's end. Oh, actually move away from this. RP is going to come out in the two. Looking for the kills. Can they get him though? Healing up. Oracle taking a lot of damage to sustain him. But the Sonic Wave ends his life. And HFN trying to cut through the tree line. Crystallize with the Battle Trans activate. And the BKB going. Wants to kill off the Razor. But a lot of damage on the Magical. He has to retreat. And Crystallize is going to be left behind with no assistance. And Blizzy, he can't do anything either. In the end, <laughs> they're just running for the high hills. I love how Razor was just sitting there not giving a damn about the troll hitting him with ulti plot because he drained all of his damage. <laughs> if you don't have damage, you can't lifesteal. This is the problem. Like He landed a two-man RP even with the Spectre using a Haunt. It's gonna be tough. Like This game could actually end. They popped five ulties it and is. there it is. GG's called. GG out. I mean, it's definitely true that that we are so dominant in that fight. It's just, the more you actually think about the interaction with the Battle Trance as well, you're basically a dog on a leash following him around. A very well, uh, well, an obedient dog, in fact. As a result, 23 minutes in, Chaos take the lead by taking game one. And I mean, where was the biggest problem for you for Na'Vi? Like, what was the biggest weakness? Was it what you said earlier, where there was a point where they had the haste rune on Magical and they should have been making plays and they weren't connecting? I mean, you're playing basically four versus five because Enigma is jungling. You should be winning your lanes. Your tri lane didn't achieve that much. I mean, this Magnus, he didn't play bad, but it's a position four Magnus, so he he's not Tusk. He's not Earth Spirit that he can make those rotations. Also, mid lane was not going well for Queen of Pain. And with the itemization on V with that road of Atos, uh, Magical just did not have a game. Also, I, I got to praise Chaos for it. their movement around the map. Misery was involved from the start, uh, getting a kill, playing around timings on a Beastmaster. He got six before Brew kill, then another kill, which led into a tower, got the alpha, more damage on top of lads, tier two tower falls. The whole map opens up for them. They ward it up. It's pretty much a textbook example how to play, how to play Dota. Yeah, beautifully done from Chaos. Means they do go one game up. They're going to need to win another one if they want to go through and face off against Vici. But before we get to that, we're going to go to a short break. So hang around. Won't be long before we get underway with game number two, where we'll see if Na'Vi can strike back and give the aggression they need to take it out to a third game. 